Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> reading from the second book of Samuel. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained a few days in Ziklag. David intoned this lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that the song of the bow be touched to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Joshua. He said, Your glory, O Israel, lie slain upon high your places, how the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Goth, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will exalt you mountains of Gilboa. Let there be no dew arrayed upon you, nor bounteous fields. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, and the shield of Saul, anointed with the oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan loved and loved him. In life and in death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughter of Israel, Weep over Saul, 
who clothed you with crimson and luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved you were to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perish. The word of the Lord. <coughs> Thanks be to God. God. Let us say together Psalm 139 in your booklet. Out of the depths that I call you, O Lord, O Lord. Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, were to know what is done amiss, O Lord, who can stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, and his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, with him there is plenty of redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the eagerness earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that as by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving you my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you. It is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who has much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed the gate in the boat from the other side, a great crowd of crowds gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him with fear. And the little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with them. And a large crowd followed him and pressed him on him. And there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much in many positions, and had spent all that she had. And she would go back, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hearing stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone forth from her, Jesus turned back in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had come. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, God, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house and said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher in the firm? But only hearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear. Only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and put the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, To live to come, which means, Little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was twelve years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Please be seated. It's good to be with you this morning. It's always good to be with St. Barnabas. In today's epistle reading, Paul didn't mince words. Typical Paul. He makes us realize what it means to be a Christian and to follow Jesus Christ. He gives us practical guidance on how to live our lives. But he also says things that we don't necessarily want to hear. And today's reading is no different. To put the reading in context, Paul has been traveling from church to church to another church, raising money for the poor. He is writing a letter to the church in Corinth after visiting churches in Mesopotamia. As with many of his letters, he first praises the Corinthians and quickly tells them what he expects of them by saying, As you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking of supporting the poor. He goes on to say, 
I do not command you to do this, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. While he says he's not issuing a command, he might as well have done so. He challenged their love for Jesus Christ by comparing their support for the poor with the support shown by the Mesopotamians, which was the church with far fewer resources that gave generously to the support of the poor. But his message had a point. Everybody can give something. Everybody can give some support to those that are less fortunate. Paul goes on to say, and in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. In other words, it's not important just to give, but to have a great desire to give. What you feel in your heart is as important, if not more, than what you do. Then he says, now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it in accordance to your means. For me, Paul had once again combined two really important points into one short sentence. Now finish doing it, and according to your means. Some 40 years ago, I worked for a large multinational company. The chairman and CEO was someone that could really cut through the BS and get to the heart of the matter, like Paul. He said a grand strategy implemented poorly will fail every time. But an okay strategy implemented with precision and gusto and passion will win every time. Now finish doing it. Paul is saying to the church in Corinth, you have said you are committed to supporting the task, in this case supporting the poor, and he says, now finish the task. As I think about the larger Episcopal Church in general, over the past 50 years, we have said we are committed to a wide range of initiatives, supporting the poor and disenfranchised, taking the gospel to those that are unchurched, to foreign ministries, to education, to children and youth, to being inclusive. Yet it also seems to me that we have often failed to finish the task. We spend a great deal of time talking about grand strategies about what we want to do and achieve, but never seem to put these words fully into action. There have been times that we've started initiatives only to have them fall short of expectations. So instead of reflecting on what we have, what we have learned, and recommitting ourselves to a different way of achieving the same objective, we say, well, we tried that and it didn't work, so we're not gonna do that again. For me, this is symptomatic of an organization that says they are externally oriented, but are in reality are internally focused. It's an organization that has all the symptoms of learned helplessness, as Bishop Ben Hayes described in one of his weekly new newsletters several years ago. It's an organization that's stuck. They're being held back by the past. It's an organization that wants to keep things the way they have been and uses any and every internal and external experience as an excuse. Paul is saying to us in today's lesson, finish the task. Each of you has potential, both rich and poor. Each of you has time and talent to offer. Focus on the ministry of the church. Listen for God's voice and listen more with your heart and with your head. Our retiring presiding bishop, Michael Curry, says that despite our differences, we should focus on what it means to be Christians, to carry out the good news of God's unconditional love for each and every one of us. His favorite saying 
If it's not about love, then it's not about God. As we need God's help to finish the task, if something does not work at first, try something different. But don't give up. Putting aside our differences with each other, putting prior relationships and hurt feelings in the rearview mirror, it's not easy to do. Experience tells us that this can be done by engaging in holy conversations. First, by sharing and respecting the opinions of those who have different opinions that we disagree with. And second, by focusing on the present and the future, not the past. I don't know a single Episcopal church, and I've worked with a lot of them in this diocese, that does this well all the time. You see, it's human nature to allow disagreements to divide us and to limit our conversations. We all tend to be attracted to people that share the same opinion and avoid any discussion with those that we disagree with. This has become the norm in our society. We see it every day in the press and in our local state and national politics. There is no longer a sharing of opinions and ideas and respect for individuals and opinions that are different. As we look around the world, an extreme example of how the test has influenced the present is in the Middle East. There are tribal conflicts that go back thousands of years that motivate additional violence and killing, even within the same religions. You see, there are historical relationships between different denominations within the Islamic faith. But don't despair. In our Christian history, there have been and continues to be conflict between different denominations, such as Roman Catholic and Protestant, conservative and progressive, all occurring as the world around us becomes more secular. We have an opportunity, an opportunity to make a difference, an opportunity to part with the past. The Episcopal Church can be an example of how Christians with widely different beliefs on certain issues can come together to carry the gospel of Jesus to those in need. While discerning the will of God with love and respect for each other in our hearts. As you think about your role as a member of God's family, St. Barnabas, what can you do to help us look forward, to always look forward, not to look back? Are, we, are you willing to put the past in the past? Are you willing to engage with those that hold different opinions? What is your God-given talent? that can make a difference? Are you committing a fair share of your God-given time and faith to the glory of God? Only you can answer these questions. It's between you and God. If you want some guidance, read Paul's letters in the New Testament. But don't expect him to say that you're doing a great job. <laughs> expect his words to challenge you in ways that you will not expect. In his holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and he was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found in your bosom in the church. Oh God, we ask your guidance for all those who can minister in your universal church both lay and of pain. Equip the saints for their work of ministry and reveal the unity of the faith so that we may build up the body of Christ. Let us speak in faith and encourage God's love to the world. We give thanks for the election of our next presiding bishop and for those who have met in Louisville at the Inquest General Convention. May God's peace and protection be all be with all of you who are traveling in the spirit of Almighty God's wisdom and understanding. Guide us through these months of transition. Preserve our Friday presiding Bishop Michael as he finishes his term with great grace and courage to Bishop Shaw. His successor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for those who lead our community and the nation to the world. Lead them to listening and discern wisdom, speak with care of truth, and follow the path that benefits all. Let us speak in faith and encourage God's love to the world. We give thanks for the many gifts we have received from creation. The air we breathe, the water we drink, and the land that produces our food. But we know that we also abuse what we have been given. Help us to focus on sustaining these resources and make the necessary changes necessary to be stewards of creation. Let's speak in faith and courage God's love to the world. We are aware of the diversity of our communities. We come from different experiences and yet in Christ we are one. Help us to continually see the light of God that is in each of us and lead us to heal the wounds and meet the needs of all our readers. Let us speak in faith and courage, God's love to the world. We pray for the congregation to improve St. Patrick's. We also pray for our, our ecumenical partners, especially Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Garden City and Our Lady of Lords Catholic Church in Woodford. In our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, we pray for St. Mary, full of grace and love, that they would help them to shine the light of Christ and be the beacon for those who seek a deeper relationship with God. Amen. Let us speak in faith and courage, God's love to the world. We pray for those who are suffering or in any kind of trouble, especially Linda, Nan. James, Nick, George, Zachary, Renee, Hope, Tom, Trinity, Pat, Jean, Rebecca, Avery, Courtney, Susan, Danny, Gilbert, Sheila, Glenn, Robert, Nate, Ryan, Paul, Beth, Alexis, Mike, Harry, Richard, Mitch, Rebecca, the Vegas family, Bobby, Michelle, Al, Cindy, Alex, Haley, Tara, Florence, Dana, Millard, Mike, Lamar, Leslie, Julie, Jules, Alice, Sharon, Sonia, Paige, Sarah, Maggie, Jessica, Nora, 
the Chow family, Carl, Randy, Daniel, Linda, and Tim, Becky, Jamie, and Drew. And when they walk in the storm, may they have faith in Christ's truth. Let us speak in faith and courage, God's love to the world. We know our time in this world is not endless. We pray for all who have died, especially Bethany and I. Welcome them to you in your eternal kingdom and give grace and hope to those who mourn, knowing that you are also with us to the end of the age. Let us speak in faith and courage, God's love to the world. Accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O love of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess the grace and nature to you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Started in St. John's in Bainbridge, 
if anyone is interested, it is for lay people. Um, if you're also interested in oh, maybe becoming a deacon or even a priest, this might be a good thing to get your feet wet in. It's a four-year program. Um, they do offer that. Um, if you've started it, fine. You can keep going on. Like I said, there's four years involved. Um, if you're interested, I have um, uh, Leslie Dellenberg Carter's number. If you want that, to get in touch with her. I don't know any more than that. I know it does cost money to do that. It is from the Suwami uh, College, the University of the South. So they're the ones that sponsor this. If you're interested, um, it's a good way to dive deeper into the Bible and learn about the church. And then um, go on from there. It's, I haven't done it, but I do become a mentor, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. And it was really very interesting to learn what was involved with all this. And um, I'm looking forward to doing it. It's, it's not like there's something that's close by, but we're looking to see if there is. And also, there are also all line ways that you can do it as well. Um, we're going to uh, we're going to look at perhaps having a Baptist Episcopalian retreat, and that's for all three uh, Episcopal churches in Valdosta. So um, keep tuned for that, and that will be our vestry, um, Christ the King vestry, and Christ Church vestry all getting together hopefully maybe in Honey Creek and having someone to uh, facilitate that for us. Um, we're trying to work together more, and that brings me up to the 4th of July, which uh, Christ Church is sponsoring a program on July 4th. If you are interested in going, please let me know today. Um, I told uh, one of the ladies at Christ Church that I would give them a head count. Also, it is like a potluck, and she's saying it's like a, a Sunday summer brunch. So you all know what a southern, southern Sunday brunch is. <laughs> okay, they're having fried chicken and then all different kinds of sides. They're looking for um, anyone who <coughs> bring something. So if you know if you want to bring something, um, let me know again um, so I can let them know so we have a head count and we know kind of what's happening so we don't have like 10 coleslaws, although all coleslaw is good, but we would like to have some more. So please let me know. Um, also, um, we're looking at um, showing the Philadelphia 11. Um, some of you have already seen that. Um, we're going to have that on July 28th. It's a Sunday after church. If you haven't seen it, please come and see. It's about 11 women that became Episcopal priests and what they had to go through to become that. And we saw that at convention last year. And then we also had a show I up here in Valdosta, um, I don't know, poor rain. So a lot of, lot, was not as big a showing as we would like. So if you are interested, I would highly recommend seeing that um, each time you watch it, you learn something new. Um, what else do we have? That's about, that's about the excitement for that best community, always exciting, always is. Um, also, for some of the best community, they're always so much fun. They are. Um, and you do learn a lot and realize that um, maybe we can look at seeing, letting everybody know what vestry actually does, because I know it's like, oh yeah, vestry, and it's way out there. And people say, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. You do it, but we want to have you all join in and do it as well. So um, hopefully we'll give you some little lessons during the, the Sundays about what vestry is and, and what, what you all um, provide for our church. Um, anything else? No? Okay, well, then I'll be quiet. Thank you so much. I'd like to encourage everybody to participate on July 4th. Anytime we're doing things together with the other Episcopal churches in town, I have to say this is, I've been on a campaign for the last 10 to 15 years to get our three churches to start doing things together. We're each a small church. We don't have much of a presence in the community 
individually. But when we do things together, we have a much bigger footprint in, in the community that we call Valdosta. And it, it tells people who we are. We show them how we can work together. And so I encourage you to do that. It's exciting. Um, when we first moved here 20 years ago, I never understood why we didn't do more together. But uh, I'm excited about the initiative. Sometimes we need a change in some of the leadership, some of the priests that were here in, in order to get that to happen. And it's now happening, so I'm excited about it. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
Himself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he did it, thanks to you, he took it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. Be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of you, and unending life from him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us down to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Amen.